Okie doke. Um, thank you, Eric. So we'll go ahead and actually cover things we might need for the practice. So you're welcome to practice on your carpet floor. If you have carpet in your living area, um, you're welcome to get a mat or like a blanket to make sure that you have something beneath you uh, to support your body and your movement for this evening. Um, if folks are open to it, I, I was gonna suggest having a towel um, or some sort of blanket. So we'll do a little bit of restorative towards the end uh, for the upper body. So I have this like thin towel. Um, I, I folded it, um, I guess, hamburger style. Um, so half, and then I kind of rolled it up um, from bottom to top. So you can kind of experiment. You'll use this a little bit later um, and maybe, yeah, we'll use it, I think, for two poses. Um, so you're welcome to have a rolled up blanket or a towel um, near you or that part of the practice. Um, that's basically it. Uh, we're going to start off by seated, like having a seated um, posture. So you're welcome to sit either on the edge of a, a couch or the edge of a, uh, a chair. Um, we won't be seated for too long. It'll be mostly the warm up for a seated practice. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and ring the bell to invite us into the space. Finding a comfortable position, preferably if you can seated, um, otherwise you can recline on your back. And I invite you to remove maybe any glasses, anything that's on your face or head that you would like to let go of for these first few minutes together. I invite you to soften your gaze. So what that could look like is maybe picking a spot in front of your view, right in front of you and just softening the eyes and allowing them to relax. So slightly closing them or you can close them all the way. Bringing our attention to our hands, we'll go ahead and bow in together to honor this space. So we'll go ahead and bring the hands, the palms together in front of the face. And then draw a line from mind to heart. Coming down right in front of the heart, just having the palms in front of the heart. And then we'll go ahead and bow in together. And then allowing the arms and the hands to rest back down on the lap or maybe holding them together here. We'll take a moment here to focus on the surface beneath us, the earth that is giving us support, the earth that allows us to rest on it. So just sensing the physical surface beneath you. Could be sits bones, touching the cushion or 
surface beneath you, as well as the legs and the feet. Bringing our mind, our attention now to the breath and just noticing where the breath at is this evening. Maybe it's a little faster pace. Or if it's slowing down, just noticing that it's slowing down. If it's helpful, maybe paying attention to the breath as it comes in and out the nostrils. Just paying attention to that gentle sensation. Noticing on the inhale, the warmth of the breath. And then on the exhale, the release of the breath. I'm going to read off a land acknowledgement as we sit here and breathe together as well as a spiritual lineage acknowledgement. This was co-written by members of the Yoga for People of Color Sangha based in Albuquerque, and it has been slightly edited. We begin our time this evening by acknowledging that we are on stolen, unceded indigenous land. So if you know the name of the indigenous um, folks whose land you're on, just naming that. In Albuquerque, it could be Tiwa and Ismeta. I am currently on Catawba land here in Charlotte, North Carolina. We acknowledge the past and ongoing native resurgence and resistance to the colonization of this land. We are gathered here today and also to recognize in our hearts and minds the original indigenous peoples and stewards of the land that we are living on. We're offering a breath for our indigenous relatives and the land stewards. We recognize that yoga itself is a spiritual practice with its roots planted in South Asia and that it has its own journey of colonization and decolonization. We open this gathering to integrate this awareness, to know that our gathering is simultaneously, simultaneously resisting various forms of oppression, which includes white patriarchal capitalist colonial formations um, and other enforcement practices of yoga and meditation in the US as well as India under the Modi government. Lastly, we acknowledge that yoga and meditation is for all bodies, all capacities and abilities and that gender and sexuality are infinite. Every single one of us has our own journey to explore when it comes to the practice of yoga. 
and we have the autonomy to shape this relationship. May we weave our individual freedom and collective liberation as we continue the practice of yoga. Wherever you're at, bringing our attention back to the breath. I invite you all into breathing together. So we'll do three rounds of breaths. Wherever you're at, go ahead and let go of the, let go of the breath. Breathing in through the nose. And out through the mouth. Breathing in through the nose. Now through the mouth. Doing that one more time together. In through the nose. And out through the mouth. Opening the eyes if you haven't already. I wanted to offer a mudra this evening. The name of the mudra um, is called Jala Mudra. A mudra is sort of like a prayer with your body. Um, it's the way I like to think about it. And we use it so that we can merge the energies from the mind, the heart, and the body. So anytime you're meditating, a mudra is very helpful, but I wanted to offer it just to open up our practice. I'll come up close to the camera. So as you're seated, your hands will be open and you'll bring your thumb and your pinky together. So you'll have your three fingers. So just allowing them to sort of curl out. This mudra kind of represents a few things, but jala mudra, jala itself means water, liquid, or flowing. And this mudra allows us to find that sense of flow in our lives and our energy, whether that's our inner worlds as well as our outer worlds. So it allows us to connect to that innate ability to heal. And the way I would think about it is healing waters. So before we get into our movement, let's just sit here for a minute and invite that energy in, the Jala Mudra. The affirmation I wanted to offer this evening, um, if it resonates for you, you're also welcome to create your own affirmation. But the affirmation is, my inner rivers flow with the rhythms of Mother Earth and nature. My inner rivers flow with the rhythms of Mother Earth and nature. So we honor that vital aliveness that's within, as well as the aliveness that Mother Earth and nature offer, especially the water element. We call in these energies to help us balance and improve any health of the systems in nature that incorporate that water element. And that includes our body, our circulation, our kidneys, our lymphatic uh, system. 
in the just the, the general inner water element. This mudra also helps us with digestion and the sense of renewal. We'll go ahead and release the mudra for now. And checking in with our upper body, we'll go ahead and start our flow this evening. So sitting upright, if you're not already sat upright, we'll go ahead and start to lift the arms towards the sky. And just imagining that we, we can also invite the mudra here. So if it helps, just reaching up and out and inviting that mudra. So bringing the pinky finger and the thumbs together. Taking a moment just to check in with our spine and our waist, our alignment. The shoulders are rolled back and down. And imagine that you're sort of reaching up through the heart and the top of the head. With every exhale, just inviting the shoulders to relax. You're welcome to keep your arms slightly bent. We'll release the mudra and we'll begin to take a side stretch. So dropping that right arm down to your right and taking that opposite arm and grounding through the hips, opening that entire left side. And again, reaching with the heart, looking up towards the sky, towards the ceiling. The shoulders are rolled back. You're welcome to go deeper or just stay towards the mid lane. And then from here, we'll start to do some circles. So if you like to swim, these are really good joint openers. So just reaching back, forward, up and back, down. So just inviting some movement into those joints. Going at your own pace. Going a little quicker just because it feels good. Go ahead and do one more circle around. And then we'll come back up. Again, reaching the arms up towards the sky. And then dropping the opposite arm so that left arm can come. And if you're sitting down, you can. Um, if you're sitting down on a chair, you can use that chair for support. Otherwise, you're just planting that palm into the earth. And again, making sure that your hips are nice and heavy on the ground. So that right hip is really rooting down. I'll go ahead and start to Open up that shoulder. So you're kind of, you're reaching back, almost like you're swimming. Forward, I guess. And inviting the breath to help us with the alignment here. Letting go of the day so far, the week. One more all the way around and we'll come back up. We'll go ahead and start to do some spinal circles. So sitting, um, you'll bring your heart forward, move to the left and start to find a flow, a circle here. So coming forward, breathing in, breathing out, moving back. Breathing in, coming forward, to the left, and then back, to the right. Again, moving at your own pace, at your own breath, um, pace.
And then we'll go the other direction. So if you were going left or right, switching. We'll do one more this direction. And then we'll find stillness. We will go ahead and do a transition. We'll transition to our hands and knees. Um, we'll go ahead and make sure that everything is stacked on top of each other. So the shoulders are right over the wrists and you're pressing, we're pressing the palms into the earth and then the knees are directly under the hips. So we'll go ahead and step the arms, or sorry, step the palms forward to give us some space. The knees can go a little bit wider here. And we'll just do some hip rotation. So coming forward, breathing in, going to the left, breathing out, back. So again, going at your own pace. You can do small circles, you can do big circles. Breathing in, coming forward, and breathing out, going back. You can also isolate um, the hips a little bit more. So instead of doing bigger motions, just like moving the hips, maybe side to side. So find, finding like a, a little river flow with your spine as well as your hips and maintaining that ground, the groundedness through the arms and the knees and the feet. So coming back, bringing the palms closer back to this tabletop, we'll start to move the spine so like that rocking motion that we kind of explored. We'll continue to do that and maybe inviting the, the shoulders in. Taking that moment to invite the body to collaborate. You're also welcome to do some cat cows. So what we'll do is we'll press into the earth Eyes of the elbow are, are forward, so spinning them forward, making sure your foundation is strong. Breathing in, looking forward and starting to arch the back. And then going the opposite direction, pulling the belly towards the spine, shoulders towards the, the sky. Breathing in, looking forward, opening the heart. Exhaling in the opposite direction. I invite you to do more of a flow here. So what you can do is look forward, breathe in, and then sitting back towards the heels, releasing the breath, and then coming up, flowing up towards the sky. So breathing in, looking forward, and then sitting back towards the heels, releasing everything in the spine, and then sort of flowing your way back up. Breathing in, squeezing the shoulders towards each other. Releasing, sitting back on the heels, and then flowing back up. Doing that one more time, breathing in, and then out, sitting back on the heels and flowing back up. Perfect. We'll go ahead and come into a downward dog. So you're welcome. I'll offer two options here. You're welcome to bring, you're welcome to get into this position here where you come down to your um, elbows. And what you'll focus on here is engaging the core and squeezing 
the elbows towards each other, but not moving them. So squeezing them towards each other and then lifting through the hips. You can stay here or you can extend the arms out and come into a puppy pose. So everything touching is really just the palms, the arms up to the elbows, and then the forehead, you can go ahead and just rest it. So this is an alternative to downward dog. So if your energy is needing this pose, it still is beneficial. And then the hips are just going straight up. Otherwise, um, you can work your way up to a downward dog. So from hands and knees pushing into the floor, lifting the knees, and then sending those hips back and up, up and back. So what you're doing is you're pushing against the floor, engaging the core, and then reaching up towards the back of the room and the ceiling. If you're in downward dog, you can go ahead and start to bend the knees one by one. Checking in with the hamstrings, the calves. Maybe pausing and stretching one side, one calf. And the other. And then we'll meet back into that puppy pose for folks who are already down there. We'll meet you there. So again, just checking in with our core and making sure we're supported. The knees and the elbows are squeezing towards the center, squeezing towards each other to lift out of the posture. I'll go ahead and come out of the pose. I invite you to get into a child's pose. So the knees can come out wide. If you have a mat, mat with distance works, not wider. And then allowing yourself to melt down towards the earth. So the hands are spread, the fingers are spread wide and we're allowing the head to rest on the earth. So I'll offer the affirmation again here um, that we spoke about in the beginning. The affirmation is my inner rivers flow with the rhythms of Mother Earth and nature. So a lot of the times when we're going through change and things feel like they're in flux, coming to a position like this, child's pose or balasana is such a sweet reminder that the earth can be a refuge for us. And that we have that connection and that we can tap into it, that we have access to it. And also honoring the body and those inner, inner healing waters. We'll go ahead and come back up to tabletop. And from here, taking a moment to transition here, we'll go ahead and start to get into a lunge. So what that will look like is from tabletop, you'll step that right foot, we'll start with the right side, up by the left, or sorry, the right um, hand. So I'll show you, this is what it looks like here. 
your back leg can be um, planted and pressing into the earth. We want to make sure that we're activating that back leg as much as we're activating the front one. So we'll be here for just a second. Just allowing ourselves to melt into the posture. Just noticing if there's resistance, anything that's coming up. And again, inviting the body and the breath to collaborate. So if we are focused on opening up the hip here, allowing that breath to reach the hips and sort of like breathing into the hips and breathing, breathing um, some energy. Okay. From here, we'll go ahead and straighten that front leg. So you can keep, you don't have to, it, it doesn't, um, when I say straighten, it doesn't always mean literally straight. You can keep a bend um, in your knee. Um, so you can use your hands to sort of prop up here and just uh, stretching that front hamstring. So we're sort of tucking the sits bones under and pulling that leg back. And then the, the bent knee is squeezing towards the front. So there's this sort of sensation of being picked up or picking our energy up and through tops of our heads. You can go ahead and maybe point the toes and stretching the top of the foot here. I'm just exploring that sensation. And we'll go ahead and bend that knee again, that front knee. We'll go ahead and if it feels accessible, um, we'll go ahead and stay here for a little bit longer. So bringing the right um, hand to the right knee, starting to open up to the side. And then we'll sort of sweep. So what we'll do is we'll bring that right arm and sweep across the chest and then all the way up, just reaching. Again, just imagining that we're sort of trying to reach for something. So just like opening up the shoulders, squeezing the shoulders towards each other and allowing for the heart. We'll go ahead and bring that down and bring that left or right leg back. And just giving yourself some time here to transition, maybe rocking the hips left to right, noticing the difference between the sides. And we'll go ahead and switch sides. So bringing that left leg up by the left palm, planting. And again, just exploring the sensation. So that back leg, the right leg is the tops of the, the foot is like pressing into the mat and the palms are there to support us as well. So again, Noticing, noticing the connection between the front foot and the back knee. So, so if we bring our attention there, just imagining that we're squeezing them towards each other and we're lifting up and out. It'll give a different sensation. And we'll go ahead and straighten that front leg, giving those hamstrings some love. 
and having a slight bend if that feels more accessible. And pulling the sits bones underneath us, tucking it in underneath us and having a slight pull towards the back. We'll go ahead and point the toes, flex the ankle, point the toes and just explore that sensation. Okay, we'll go ahead and come back, this lunge. From here, we'll do the same thing we did on the other side. So we'll sweep that left hand over the heart and up. Squeezing the shoulder blades onto the back and opening the chest. Again, just paying attention to our inner thighs, making sure we're lifting up and out. And then we'll go ahead and bring that down. Perfect. We'll go ahead and transition to our back. So from here, just like taking a moment to feel new sensations in the hips. You can plant your feet um, on the earth and then give yourself some support back here. So having the palms, you can even flip them back, the, the fingers facing away from you or towards you, whatever feels good for you. We'll just go ahead and do some windshield wipers. Again, to check in with those hips and the glutes, the tender little massage for the glutes. Allowing them to fall to the right and holding it there for a little bit. And then picking them back up, the knees, and then allowing them to fall to the left. And then picking them back up. Ready from here, we're going to start to lower back all the way down, bring the spine to the floor. And we will finish our practice on our backs. Um, we still have a few more poses to go through. Just lining everything settle. You can keep the knees bent now. Let's go ahead and straighten that left leg. So straightening it out and then bringing that knee towards the heart. You don't have to have it up here. You can just for the range of motion. Maybe squeeze it towards the chest. We'll go ahead and straighten that leg all the way up. And again, keeping a nice gentle bend in the knees. Um, you can interlace your fingers and bring them behind under your um, leg, sort of like right in between the buttocks and the thigh, the under, or the hammy under the thigh. So just hugging. Feeling that sensation um, between the palms and then the, the back part of the leg. So imagining that the leg here, the left leg, is pressing into the floor. So just allowing some energy there. And then also using the palms, the interlaced palms, as a way to bring awareness to our hamstring. So pushing the back of the leg into the palm, just gently. And then our foot here 
it can be um we'll go ahead and we'll have a um, the ankle activated and we're imagining that we're reaching through this ball mat it's almost like you're trying to touch the space above your foot all those small things all those um micro movements will really allow us to open them Okay, we'll go ahead and relax and bend that left knee again. And we'll go ahead and bring this um, right ankle over the left knee. So kind of like we're um, in this figure four shape. This, you can absolutely allow your um, ankle and your hip to naturally open here. Or if you want a deeper stretch, bringing the left knee towards the chest, and then again, interlacing the fingers behind the legs. Or if you want to interlace them under the front part of the knee, that way. If it feels good to you, you have the option of rocking left to right. So just taking a moment to check in with that lower back. It can be a very, very light rock. It doesn't have to be big movement. And that left, or sorry, right ankle is flexed. So we wanna keep that flex so we can protect the knee joints well as the ankle here. Go ahead and come to stillness and release that left leg down and the right leg. We'll go ahead and straighten that right leg and the left leg and just notice, we'll, we'll just notice and allow that movement to settle. So inviting the breath in here. Go ahead and bend that left leg into the chest again. So we're flexing the right side, so the right foot. And the leg is pressing into the floor and the right ankle is flexed. Go ahead and straighten that left leg all the way up. Just a slight bend in the knee, interlacing the fingers and supporting that back side of the leg. So using that, that support of the interlaced fingers and palms, pushing into them with the back of the side of the leg and then flexing that foot, reaching up. into the breath, flow of the breath. Go ahead and release and allow that leg to come down. We'll bend both, both legs and we'll go ahead and start to do that figure four on the other side. So bring the left ankle over the right knee. Again, allowing yourself to check in with the body 
you would like a more passive stretch and just allowing the hip to naturally open, it might help to bring your left arm and just bringing it to the left hip and just offering that touch, and that affirmation. If not a more active stretch, deeper stretch, would be just bringing the, the knee, the right knee towards the chest and then allowing the fingers of the palms to wrap around either the knee itself or the back of the thigh. You're welcome to rock side to side. Or if it feels better to just be still, that's an option too. That left ankle is activated and then If you're rocking, come to stillness, and we'll go ahead and release everything. We'll release the legs back onto the earth. And just taking a moment to check in with the body. If you have your towel, it would be a good time to grab it. You're welcome to line it up so that it sits across the shoulders here. So it'll go right across the shoulders, um, left to right. So I'm just gonna go and lay down on the towel or the blanket and then allow the, that gentle opening to happen across the chest. You're welcome to completely relax the body and allow gravity to support us, allow the earth to be our refuge. Tuning into that inner river, inner healing waters. Checking in with the smaller parts, smaller muscles of the face. I invite you to, or maybe we can invite our jaws, our jaws to unclench here. Our eyes can be closed or slightly open. inviting the body to let go just a little bit more. Unclenching the jaws and allowing the tongue to relax. Offering the affirmation once again, I'll read it off as we just sit here and lay here. Take everything in um, if it resonates. The affirmations. My inner rivers flow with the rhythms of Mother Earth and nature.
I'll go ahead and bring some sensation back into the fingers and the palms. Just like wiggle them. I invite you to bring your palms under your neck. So it's almost like you're in this chill position. See how that might have shifted sensation. Bringing in a little bit more strength into the shoulders. We'll go ahead and squeeze the shoulders towards each other. So tucking them back and under. A little bit more active here. Bringing the knees to the chest. So you'll want to use a little bit of your core here just to bring them into the chest. And then we'll allow them to fall, allow the knees and the legs to fall to the right. You can have your knees just stacked on top of each other like this, or if it feels good to you, you can cross them. So I'm crossing my left leg over my right leg, kind of like I'm sitting and crossing my legs. I'm gonna just allow them to fall to the right. This is a little bit more getting into the outer hips and the spine. If this is sensation is a little too much, you're welcome to undo your arms and just allow them to come to a T. So the shoulders are laying flat across the earth. They are heavy and firm onto the ground. I'll go ahead and check in with the core here again, activating it and bringing those knees back up. I'm gonna switch sides. If you had your legs crossed, you're going to cross your right leg over the left. Otherwise, you're keeping them just as is and you have them stacked. Um, but if you have them crossed, go ahead and start to drop them to the left. Again, allowing the shoulders to be heavy, to be our anchor as everything twists from the belly down. Go ahead and check in with the core. And using our core, lifting the knees back up to its center and unwinding if you can have them cross. Go ahead and let go of the, the upper body um, posture uh, shape. And we'll go ahead and remove that towel. You can, uh, or the blanket, you can go ahead and make a little pillow out of it if that feels good for you, or if you have a pillow, you're welcome to use it. Um, we're going to close now with our resting pose, um, Shavasana. So getting as comfy as you can, allowing everything to rest onto the earth, letting go. much as we can. The arms can be down, 
arms can be facing up or slightly inwards. And then if it feels good tucking the shoulders underneath the heart, breathing the shoulders, lifting the chest to make room for the shoulders, allowing that gentle opening to happen. I'll read that affirmation one last time. My inner rivers flow with the rhythms of Mother Earth and nature. For this last minute in our resting pose, I invite you, if it feels good, bringing the hands across the chest so the fingers are facing towards the center. And if touch doesn't feel good across the chest this evening, you can hover the fingers over the chest. There's space for it all. Wherever you are at, bringing those hands right over heart center. And taking a moment to breathe into the lungs. Whenever things 
begin to shift, whether it's inside our inner worlds or in the outer world, the collective awareness. Navigating the shifts can be pretty difficult if we're not having opportunities to come back to ourselves. So something as simple as laying down on the floor, the spine resting against the earth and the hands over the heart can become a practice and an act of just coming back to our own refuge. I'll go ahead and start to bring some movement into the feet and the rest of the body. Come back up. So rolling over to one side, taking your time to sit back up. Rolling over to one side maybe and then pushing up. Coming back to a seated position. If you'd like to stay reclined, you're welcome to stay reclined. I'm going to go ahead and ring the bell three times so that we can close. So whether you're reclined, laying down or um, seated, let's go ahead and close with that mudra as well. Jala Mudra, bringing the pinky and the thumbs together on each hand and then allowing them to open up, allowing the palms to face upwards. Go ahead and ring the bell. Seeing that mudra, bringing the hands in front of the face, in front of the mind, drawing that line from mind to heart. And we'll go ahead and bow it together. is the end of our practice. Thank you all so much for your practice and for this beautiful invitation. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Carla. Thank you, Alicia, and everyone else who organized this space. Thank you, Nova. Thank you, Nova. Thank you. That was wonderful. I hope everyone has a lovely evening rest, a good night's rest. Hi, friend. I'm gonna hang out till 9.30, or sorry, not sorry, my time is 9.30. Um, 
so we can type new sentence. Welcome. 